me now. This is not so an instructional video. This is just I'm making quiche and I can talk to you at the same time. If you want to ask questions about what I'm doing, go ahead and I'll just explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it because it gives me so much to talk about. So I learned this. I cannot for the life of me remember who I learned the pastry off. But this is really simple. The quiche was hard, it's not. If you ever thought baking pastry is hard, it's not. The only problem I have is... <clears throat> Hi Rach! Yeah, I know. Don't worry, I'm not using the hob this time. There's no oil either. Um, the one problem we have is you Americans do everything in cups, measurements. Uh, we don't. So what I've done is I've chosen a cup, which is more or less probably what your cups are and i just go off that so for the pastry one and a quarter cups of flour so i just kind of have to i wing it you yeah, know i always do so flour one and a quarter cups of flour keep that because we eat later uh, a third of a cup of butter. No, we don't use butter here. This is lower fat. Um, Mediterranean olive oil spread. I don't. I haven't actually used this one before. <coughs> so we're going to see how this works. And this is a third of a cup of butter, or whatever you've got. Nice spreads. They're healthier. Uh, yeah. If, if that was all squished down, it would probably be about a third of a cup. But, you know, this is me. About a third of a cup. It'll do. Oh, my allergies are playing up today. Get that out of the way, because I don't need that again. Hopefully. So, anyway, whoever's watching, probably Rachel, I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, there's a few people. Hello! Um, yeah, so, third of a cup of butter, one and a quarter cups of flour, and then you mix it together. But you do it with your fingers, like that. I can't remember what they call it. There's an official term, I know that. But what you're basically doing is spreading, make it into sort of like uh, crumbs kind of thing, and you spread it around throughout the flour. So today, uh, we've taken Willow off Butte, off the painkiller, because she was doing so well. And then today she won't put the leg down again. <laughs> Hi Ray! I am cooking a quiche. Now, you should really be heating up your oven, because these don't take long to make. Um, but the problem that I have is the fan is dodgy on that, the bearings of fan. Uh, the bearings of the fan are dodgy. So when that goes, it makes a horrendous noise. So I'm not going to heat it while I'm talking to you. So uh, yeah, there you go. I'm just making this like crumbs. You just sort of do that with your fingers. I don't know. I am most definitely not the world's best cook, but I'll give it a go. Sorry, it's scratching my nose. My allergies are playing up really bad at the moment. So I may look like I've been crying because I've just put um, eye drops on <laughs> my eyes. Um, this is our first spring up here, so I don't know how bad hay fever is going to affect me. I don't know how bad the trees and the forestry behind are going to affect me. So, the uh, Sefi decided yesterday to put herself in the kidding pen. She jumped in. So I thought, fine, you can stay there. 
Oh, sugar, I just got a message. So I completely forgot about. Um, sorry, it completely put me off. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, so anyway, what are you doing? Just doing that. And it mixes it all. And you'll see the flower turn a different colour. I normally use both hands, but my hands are killing me today. Fibromyalgia joys. Um, we had a load of snow yesterday. And then the cold affects it like that as well, which doesn't help. Um, so this is evenly distributed. So I've got, it's like breadcrumbs. I don't know if you can tell. It's like breadcrumbs. It's got a slightly different colour. It's no longer white flour. It's slightly, slightly buttery colour. Quite nice and yellow. Right, when you've done that, you then have to have water. Not that water. That's a nice drink. Now, I'm adding warm water. It doesn't say that. And it's literally just a little bit at a time. It doesn't say you have to add warm water, but the reason I add warm water is because our water comes out of a well and we're in the highlands of Scotland and it's cold. And so the water is just a tiny bit above freezing. It's really, really cold. So what you want to do is add little bits at a time until the flower starts sticking together. Um, yes, yeah, so as I was saying about Willow, she's um, she's off her leg again today, so I've had to put her back on the painkillers. And it may just be we took her off the painkillers too soon, or it may be there's another problem going on that we don't know about yet. What I'm trying to do is get it all to stick together, which at the moment it's not not enough water. So add just a little bit more water. In theory, it should only take about three or four spoonfuls of water. Um, big spoons, tablespoons, that's what the problem. Um, you, you guys could ask me any questions. I've only talked about what I'm doing to give me something else to talk about. This live was a general, while I'm doing something, can I have time? So, uh, yeah, but I love this gift. I really, really love it. We got 12 eggs today from 12 hens. That's fantastic. Um, we put a new hay bale in the top barn in the big lambing barn put a new hay bale in there today and um, i was rooting through the old one <laughs> found loads of eggs but they're quite new eggs right this is almost coming together look at that it's almost coming together and what you want to be able to do is get it in a ball sort of thing and for it to be leaving as you spin it around your mixing bowl i don't have a mixing bowl Hi Heather! As I don't have a mixing bowl, I'm using this thing. I have got mixing bowls, they just haven't been unpacked. Um, and what you want is when you grab it, for it all to stay together and clean the bottom and the sides. But it's not quite, I'm nearly there. Do you need a tiny bit more water? Pie crust, yes. Uh, I'm making a quiche, so this is a really simple pie crust, which I had no idea was so simple. Hi Samson Farms, how are you doing? So anyway, everybody, talk to me about anything. I'm not just talking about cooking because I'm by no means person you should really be learning from. So you see that it's cleaning the bottom and if I grab it, should all stick together. And then sort of clean the bottom with it. Does that make sense? I don't know. I have no idea if it makes sense. Okay, so this is just about ready. So what I'm going to do now, put that to one side, this is why I kept the flour next to me, because now I need to put flour on the side, not doing much, making a corn brisket, oh that sounds quite nice, do I think I've settled up north, yes, I don't want to leave, um, the landlord was out yesterday actually, he comes and says hello when he's in the area, and uh, he asked if we like it and everything. Okay. I feel I feel that belong up here. Want to blow some eggs? Oh wow, that'd be nice. I haven't done bl I haven't blown eggs for years since I was a kid. It's not really that common over here anymore, really. 
So, I grab my pastry. You see, should leave the bottom clean. Pretty much does. This also isn't set up for you to be able to see properly what I'm doing. So, put that somewhere out the way. <sighs> Rolling pin. I had it earlier. There it is. So I'm just pushing this out and then I'll roll it. Sounds fun. What I remember is messy. My sister used to do it quite a lot. So I'm just getting a bit of flour on either side of this. And then you roll it to the size that you need. See if you can see it, you never know. Not flour all over me. That's not uncommon when I cook. All right, even Asher will tell you I'm a very messy cook. <laughs> I used to leave it for him to tie up. <laughs> One thing I was told when you're doing pie crusts is always push, roll outwards your pastry. Never roll it backwards and forwards like I used to do. I cannot for life me think of the name. It's another homesteading channel showed me how to do this. If I find it, I'll stick it in the link. Because she also showed me how to do pizza dough, which is something I haven't actually tried yet. <laughs> yeah, I've got pee cleaned. Yeah, I'm happy with that. But the trouble is, Asher actually does a lot of the cooking. And when he does, I don't clean up after him. <laughs> he does. <sighs> Asher cleans the kitchen, not me. I have, um, because of the fibromyalgia, I have problems with, a lot of problems with your shoulders, across the back of your shoulders. Um, and believe it or not, one of the most painful things you can do when you have that problem is washing up and working in a kitchen. Because I'm only four foot ten. And uh, worktops are based for the average height. So they're basically designed for somebody who's around about five foot six, five foot seven. So you're talking nearly a foot taller than me. So a worktop that's this high here, as this one is, actually is quite painful for me. If you look at me, me my chest is nearly at the same height. My arms are really bent. Whereas you go stand at your worktop, you'll probably find your arms go a bit further down. Um, it's just because of my height. So my height together with fibromyalgia, um, actually makes working on standard kitchen worktops painful. Um, when I first moved in with Asher, I'm a giant a five foot one, yeah. Well, it's my mum's height. Um, when I first moved in with Asher, his house that uh, he had renovated, he did the kitchen completely himself and he set it up for him as to what was comfortable. Five foot three. See, sure it's all good um what was comfortable for him and Asher's six foot so the worktops at Asher's were up here um which just they're not fun for me. they were never fun for me to work on and the sink I had to do that to get into the sink to do any washing up so I basically said there and then I'm never washing up again you get a dishwasher or do it yourself and there are only two of us so having a dishwasher to many people would seem wasteful but it's just because I was in so much pain. I just couldn't. And that was even before we knew I had fibromyalgia. I knew I was in pain from using his kitchen, a step stool. No, because I'll fall off it. I have one, actually. Um, Asha's grandmother was really short like me. And um, when she passed away a couple of years ago, I, uh, I had her stool from her kitchen, little step stool. So I do have one, I do use it. This this was hers actually. I wanted a rolling pin. I saw it, I thought that's a lovely rolling pin better than mine. So I've got the steps all in the rolling pin. And uh, you know, this some of the other family um they they took jewellery on I never wear jewellery, what's the point? You know, this lovely lovely lady, I did adore her. Asha's grandmother was so lovely. Such a sweet lady, but um, I thought there's no point in me having any jewellery because I won't use it, won't wear it. 
Sorry, something's been said and I couldn't, I didn't get it. Nice memories, absolutely, Heather. So sad when she passed away. But she remained um, independent right until the very end. She literally only had a few days of not being independent. Um, the age of 93, she was doing train journeys of like 200 miles up and down the country on her own. 93. <laughs> At my age of 40, that I, I dread that idea. She was going in and out of London. She'd take three trains to get down to her daughter's house. Mad. So, right, I've just trimmed off the edge. A lot of people do fancy stuff around the edge. Um, I'm not going to because I'm not very good at it. She was, Heather. She was fantastic. Such a sweet woman. Um, yeah, so I have a step stool and a rolling pin to help me in the kitchen. Okay, this is actually a cake tin with a full uh, base that comes off. That worked for me. Right. Filling. What I normally do with this excess, actually, is I roll it out and I cook it in the bottom of the oven. And then I give it to the chickens. They like it. They really like it. Yeah, Heather, um, the woman who I was copying got this off said that's what she does the pastry making that's what she does she folds it under i said you should do this and yeah i probably should but i tried it once and then the crust was just really thick and horrible right flour this is dirty anyway i'm not worried about getting mess on it okay next thing eggs No. Next thing, I need my quiche back. Yeah, some people do like thick crust. Back to bone. Bacon. Cheese. Bacon and cheese. Bacon. Cheese. Hi from Texas. Hello from Scotland. Onion. Pepper. Pepper. Little onion. You might see me cry. I am making. Hi, Smith Family Ranch. I am making a quiche, a country quiche. So you know, it's not perfect, but nothing I ever cook is. So now what you want to do is put the stuff in the bottom. So I have these bacon bits, which I love. So they go in the bottom first. This is what you do. You just put stuff in the bottom. Tennessee. Tennessee walking horses, beautiful horses. Shame people feel the need to change their movement and do horrible ways of doing it. What we got? 13 moons. Hi. How are you doing, Annette? Okay, next thing. I need a knife. It's a knife. And I need a chopping board. Okay, I don't have a chopping board. State of me. That... Sorry, Asha? Okay, thanks. No, I don't have a chopping board. Kids are sick of quiche. How terrible. Um, yeah, I know. Me with a knife. Maybe this can get dangerous after all. <laughs> right. My work tops. I don't mind about using a knife on them. Most people don't want to and use and use a chopping board this knife is blunt let's try this one maybe i should put that one in there for me mm. i've got a blunt knife and less likely to injure myself or anybody else really um right somebody asked what kind of quiche i'm making i don't know it's quiche country quiche putting it 
whatever you want. So I made the pastry from scratch. And that was, uh, I can't remember the name of the YouTube channel that taught me how to do that, but I'll try and find it and put it in, in the description later tonight. Um, I've got to download a load of stuff and start making another video anyway. That's how you cook. Good. That's, I am very much a cook, an experimental cook, I think you can call it, which is, I, I give it a go. I wing it. <laughs> As Big Bear Home said, thought that was funny. I wing it. Best way not to cry, chocolate onions, not to get too attached to them. <laughs> well, Heather, you know, if you've grown them up from little babies and brought them on and, you know, fed them and watered them and looked after them all their lives, it's really sad when you murder them to put them in a quiche. Or anything, really. <laughs> and interestingly, no store-bought crust. No, exactly. Um, and I didn't realise how easy it was to make that pastry. Those of you who have missed it, I've just made one. Live. And I didn't mess it up. <laughs> you and me, Heather, I think get on very well. You know, there is actually scientific evidence, uh, scientific research, which actually proves that um, greenery, flowers, vegetables, whatever, actually have feelings and know what's well not sort of not know what's going on but they transmit like danger signals hey Tribble I can't pick you up darling I've got onion on my hands meow he says it's he says when I cook I should always give him bits to it you know what have a bit of bacon meow is that the, you've just oh I've missed it Tribble here I think all he could smell was the onion. Sorry, I was uh, getting distracted by the onion. Um, yeah, so there has actually been scientific research that shows that um, plants have more of an understanding of what's going on than we think. Well, when you harvest veggies, exactly, they are so happy there. Yeah, then that he is a spoiled cat, he's not very well, so um, yeah, there's experiments that have been done. Oh dear, I chopped the whole onion, I've used less than half. What am I making you tonight? You want to get in the car and come up, it'll be good tomorrow as well. I'm making quiche. Oh, I know, it's very exciting. Sorry, I've got a helper. I have a little feline, furry feline. Tribble has, um, we've got thyroid problem, so he's on thyronorm, which makes him really skinny. But he's actually responded really well to the drugs. We had, um, Dave's had it, our old cat, and he didn't respond. But opposite, opposite corners of that country, that, that county. No, state, that's the name of it. Right, so. Onion save for later. I don't know what you're talking about. I guess you're talking about an area. Right, what I'm also going to put in is yellow pepper. Well, not a whole yellow pepper. I'm one of these people, I love peppers when they're raw and when they're just cooked. Slightly al dente. Slightly undercooked, I suppose you call it. Finally finish your assignment, the <laughs> world of YouTube. Don't go down there, don't go down that, you'll end up terrible, you'll just, you'll miss a few days, you know, I was so, so bad that um, I went to bed last night, uh, about midnight, and I'm not joking, I woke up this afternoon, in fact, this evening at 5pm. So that's a lot of hours. Seven, 17 hours. 17 hours I slept for. Asha tried to wake me up a few times. Didn't work. 
but yeah that's that's the joy of things like fibromyalgia chronic fatigue you used to live in knockville yeah like raw pepper yep 17 hours straight heather you know what lynette quite often i don't sleep for more than two or three hours and that goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks but last night 17 hours and the thing is i feel right now if i went back to bed i'd fall asleep mm, do me a favor people hit the thumbs up makes me feel all fuzzy and lovely and warm inside so we've got onion we've got bacon bits and we've got yellow pepper I need to do cheese. Somebody said I had a cute little kitchen in the last video. <laughs> the kitchen's a bit bigger than it looked. I'm going to add mushroom and spinach. Mushroom! Thank you. I haven't got any spinach at the moment. But I put a little bit of black pepper on. Sometimes I put garlic granules. It's actually garlic powder. It says granules, it's powder. But when you've got onion, you don't really need garlic, I suppose. You've lost your internet, but I love garlic. Oh, I'm growing garlic, and I think it's growing. Or I thought it was growing. And then when I looked in the garden, um, it was daffodils. Right, Socks, get out. Socks is the cat that came with this place. Use nettles. Oh, that sounds interesting. Tell, Heather, tell me how you prepare them. What do you do? How do you put them in there? Did you harvest them earlier, later last year, or are they a recent thing? Well, I don't know if my garlic's growing. I thought it was, and then we ended up with tons and literally tons of um, daffodils. So once the daffodils have died off, I'll be able to go down and see if there were daffodils, if the daffodils have killed off my garlic or not. Yes, good question, Lynette. Heather, how do you desting them? Or is it just a case of they don't sting when they're young? So this is grating cheese. I need quite a lot of cheese. Got garlic growing. Want to dry some from mince. Oh, that sounds quite nice. Never done it before. Bit nervous about it. Well, you know, my my advice about anything you've not done before is just give it a go. Because if you don't do it, harvest new growth in the spring carefully, blanch them in boiling water. Do you then, what do you do after you blanch them in boiling water? Do you put them straight in? As in, Heather, do you store them over the winter and then blanch them when you use them? Or do you blanch them and then store them? If that makes sense. Um, I'd like to say how much cheese, but all I can tell you is some cheese. That's not enough. <laughs> I'll put a bit more. Drain them really well. Squeeze the liquid out. Yeah, Heather, do you blanch them, then store them, or do you store them, then blanch them when you use them? Sorry if you're trying to answer that and it's just a lag. No bad YouTube can be, and the internet in general. Nettle sounds really interesting. I do actually want to use some nettles this year. We have a few up here. Um, funny enough, my old place that had 10% of the land we have here had about 100 times more nettles than we have here. Oh, a bit more cheese. We like cheese. <sighs> Mushrooms, that's what I was looking for. Okay, I do 
not recommend, suggest whatsoever, that tin mushrooms are better than normal mushrooms, as in fresh. What I will say is, where we live here, oh, brilliant. So once you've done that, you blanch them, you drain them, squeeze out the liquid, then come back. You can chop them up and use immediately or freeze them. Thanks for that, Heather. That's really interesting. Let me give that a go. Right, yeah, mushrooms. If you've got them, harvest only in spring for the fresh eating, top two inches if they're taller. Excellent. Um, yeah, I normally would use fresh mushrooms, but right now I haven't got any. So I'm using tinned mushrooms. And I do not at all recommend that you use tinned mushrooms unless it's your only option. And the reason we have tin mushrooms, um, I want to use these up for a start because we um, we stored them over the winter. We needed something to store, you know, we needed food that we can store easily. Uh, we needed food that we can store easily um, in case we get snowed in. And so, you know, one of the things we had in order to try and have a good range of, a good selection of food is we bought a load of tins of tin mushrooms. Throw them in the quiche, egg soup sauce, eat like spinach with a splash of vinegar. Oh, that sounds really interesting. I'm gonna give that a go, Heather. I'm gonna to have to screenshot everything you've said. So anyway, these mushrooms, put them on here to drain them because you don't want to add water to your quiche where possible. You know what, a friend of mine who actually probably could have told me all about the mushrooms um, and, for, for, and unfortunately, last night she had a garage that could easily fit four cars in. And uh, she has two kids. They, they um, live off not a lot of money. Um, she works as a gardener. She used to be a teacher, but now she works as a gardener. Um, and her husband helps with the gardening as well as volunteering at a hospital. They're, you know, they're all around really nice people and I've known, um, certainly known Vicky since we were kids. I mean, oh, oh, we worked it out. 28 years. Okay, 48, 28. 31 years now I've known Vicky. Um, and unfortunately last night her big garage went up in flames, which had all her tools for her gardening job that she does. Um, it had their freezers in with all their food, had their um, laundry equipment in. Um, five fire engines, eight hours. Oh, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible hearing about it. I'm sorry, I'm sort of in the fridge. Um, yeah, so she's lost. She only started up her garden about uh, a year ago. She wanted to be at home for, with her two daughters rather than she worked in a high school as a science teacher. And her parents actually live next door but one. There's only three houses in this lane. Theirs is the first house. Her parents is the other side. She grew up in the house the other side. I spent so many hours of my life, days and weeks of my life in, that, in her parents' house just down the lane. It was so sad. Oh God, I wish I could help her. She's so far away from me. Um, where we used to live, she would only be in about an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. What I used to do whenever I was traveling past or you know, within reasonable, to me reasonable distance is like 20 miles, 25, 30 miles. I would just drop in and see her, you know, completely unannounced. Right, the next bit, I need milk. Hey, girl. This bit of the whole filling of the quiche, I got, um, I saw a video from Jess at Roots and Refuge Farm, and uh, that's probably actually about what she said. Uh, said on it, you can use cream instead of milk if you want a bit more of a richer taste. Um, but you know, I, I, I don't need the calories. 
Not a good disaster. So, yeah, we don't need the calories. Asher doesn't need the calories. Um, so I'm trying to make it as healthy as possible. So I'm using milk instead of cream. Yes, eggs. I'm trying, I'm, I'm actually thinking which to use because, you know, I've got all of these that I've just collected today. Loads of different colours and sizes. But I've actually got some in the fridge that have been waiting a while. I think I'm going to go for the big ones. Extra large. <clears throat> See, I've sorted this out. These are extra large and they are huge. And I'll get a little diddy one to show you. Yeah, no. Extra small. This is the size range that we have here with our hens. You see that? That's the size difference with our little hens. What I normally do is I normally put six in because just says four or five. Think about making mini quiche. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. I was thinking of doing that as well, actually, Lynette. Will the pastry not go soggy? Waiting on the oven to heat. Mine hasn't. No, Rach. But what you do is you make sure you get rid of any liquid, like the mushrooms. I drain them before I put them in. Um, the only I've not washed in water, uh, the peppers I've not washed in water, so it's just, it's just sitting here on the side. It's quite happy really, not gone soggy yet. If it does, when you cook it, it won't be soggy anymore. Right, so Jess at Roots and Refuge Farm said four or five eggs, but she was using, what I normally do is two huge, two medium, two small Live alone sometimes on a quick meal. Absolutely. If I wasn't talking to you guys, this would take me about 20 minutes, 25 minutes at most to make. But I'm nattering, so, you yeah. know, squirrel. All over the place. Woody. Right, so what I normally do is six eggs. I normally do two very large, well, two large, two medium, two small. But what I'm doing today, because I'm not going to use these otherwise, is I'm actually going to use my four massive eggs, or four of my six. Massive eggs. Ooh. One, two, because I think that'll be enough. Three. My poor hens that lay these. So I'll put the milk in there and I'm using four extra large eggs. Or you can use five medium or three or four medium and two or three little ditty ones. To say I normally do um Two large, two medium, two small, but today I'm doing four massive, four extra large. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now I've got to find my whisk. There it is. I don't have an electric whisk. And I'll tell you what, if I ever make up a Amazon wish list, one thing that's going to be on it is one of those big mixing machines that's got you know, the, the big up and over ones with a big bowl and, you know, lovely. I want one of them. Oops. But uh, until I start making some money myself, I can't afford to buy one. Um, I mean, Asher pays for this place. Oh, his wages, but any extras have to come from me. So get paid what color would i choose i really don't care i'm not a color matchy matchy person <laughs> really doesn't bother me but i keep looking out for a second hand one there's a load of cooking stuff that is normally up for sale around here because what happens is people move into the area go oh i need to be self-sufficient a hubby, two kids, adult kids. 
heat in the microwave that sounds amazing yeah i do i do want to make some more of these um i wasn't sure how they'd freeze though but if other people are doing them they can't be that bad you can make them little you you could make one in a mug you know just a little ditty mug that'd work do any of you recognize that mug in a muffin tin oh they'd be amazing heather little like a few couple of bite ones oh they'd be fantastic have them with a bit of salad mm. oh nice anyway that mug off the roots and refuge uh hundred thousand subscribers giveaway uh night i saw this so I, i've got to have one of them <laughs> right so you just whisk up your milk and eggs uh don't do what I did last week was I put the eggs in and everything and I literally stood here and went I've forgotten something couldn't remember what put it in the in the oven uh got it straight out because I realized <laughs> stuffing muffins that sounds really good oh you guys are giving me ideas I love it I need to buy a muffin tin I haven't got a muffin tin um what was I saying yeah so anyway I put the eggs in completely forgot the milk grabbed it out of the oven we're not in focus, there we are. Grabbed it out of the oven and uh, put the milk in on top. Don't do that. <laughs> it doesn't work. I sort of tried to mix it in the best I could, but all you actually end up with then is just scrambled egg rather than, you know, the actual proper everything like you're supposed to have. Right, I need to turn my oven on. Hopefully it won't make, it won't make noise for a while, but then I will. Um, my oven's a bit temperamental and isn't quite right. So I know that Jess said you put it on 400 for 15 minutes. I always forget that button. Put it on 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, which is about 250. Um. <laughs> Come over tomorrow. Well, we'll open half tonight. The other half will be tomorrow. Um. Yeah, so Jess said 15 minutes at 400 Fahrenheit, which is about 250 degrees C, which is about as hot as my oven actually goes here. Uh, after 15 minutes, turn it down to 375 for another 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. And when it's gone, when it's sort of hard on top, when you tap it, that's when you know it's ready. But uh, my oven is not that good. So what I do is I put it in. 250 degrees and I leave it for half an hour but that's just because I know that about my particular oven giant eggs wow. so oh yeah I haven't done this pastry for the chickens remember it's not quite enough to make another quiche so I just flatten it out a bit just like that you would love an oven, a wall oven like this well this is the grill see the problem i can't really i can just see in it a bit too high for me right so my excess pastry is just in the bottom of the oven there and that will be for the chickens so extra large i haven't got any to go in my extra large Sprinkle with cinnamon sugar. Yes, baked leftovers, exactly. Uh, I mean, these are my two giant eggs that are left. I'm working my way through them because most of ours, of course, go to the food bank. Um, behind you there, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes to go. And I've picked up another 12 eggs today. So then 11 boxes to go. And these are my spares, my little diddies. Thinking about a standalone oven, stove top, portion split door. Yeah, that would work. Um, we've got a room, which is like an Arga, and I would love to have that working. That's my plan for next winter. Sorry about the fridge, everybody. Sorry, Pussy Cat. So that's 
cooking. My fridge is out there. Um, yeah, the Arga, Rayburn, I call it an Arga, because everyone knows what an Arga is. Um, Rayburn's just another version of it, really. Uh, egg boxes. Now, this is another problem I have in this kitchen. My egg boxes are up here. Uh, where my things like my cake tin are stored are all here. I know you can't see, but it's above my head height. You can see that. Um, and there are a pain in the backside. Right, today, I'm just going to box up some eggs. Ooh, what time it is. Hold on. Four minutes. Well done. Thank you for that little clock. I'm going to set this. 25 minutes because it went in about four minutes ago. Obviously, you should normally heat up your oven. Yeah, I have got steps. Um, it's just easy to use Asher because he's taller. Mm -hmm. Right, so we split these eggs because so these go to the food bank. So, can you see that there? Yeah, you can see that there. So what I do with the eggs is I make sure that I've got some of every size in every box. That's actually an extra large one. Never mind, that'll do. Another large little one. Another little one. That. Uh, that's a medium sized one. This is what we normally end up with. We normally end up with one extra large, two large, two medium and one small and that's how I box them up um, and they uh, I put eight yeah <laughs> you know I actually really like being small I've been asked so many times over the years don't you wish you were taller no I don't actually I really don't I like being short sure it's got its problems I'm on here I write the date 17th of the third and they don't just go off like that. I actually have something on the top. And you should store eggs point tip down. Um, I put them in however they fit. So no, I haven't been told that. Uh, but the bigger ones, for instance, they won't generally fit in the normal one. So that way, that way. Yeah, the bigger ones, okay. Store them point down then. I think that's probably to do with the um, egg sac, uh, the air sac. There you go. They're all point down. <laughs> I'll have to look into that, see why that is. 17th. So that's four, eight, that's ten boxes. And one more. These ones I need to wash all of these because these were in the um, in the sheep barn. Um, these ones are all in the sheep barn, so they're going to need a, a quick wash. So they'll probably actually be used at home, because if I leave them in there, I can wash them when I need them. Because if you wash eggs, I'm told you then um, should store them in the fridge. And I haven't got the fridge space. We used to store them in the fridge, but because I don't get into Elgin where the food bank is very often. Last homey house. Never heard of that one. Oh, I'll have to have a look for them. Thanks for that. Seventeenth or third, extra small. Um, what ours? If you make deviled eggs, I don't. Turn them over the night before the morning. Boil them. The yolk to the centre. Hmm. Yeah, that's really useful. Thanks for that. This is why I love doing lives. People can give me information like this. Down here because then I can reach them easily. I don't mind them, there's only a few, put them in that drawer. Uh, probably won't be long before this starts making a huge racket, and when it does, I'll move. So I'm going to tidy up a bit. Finish my work now. Uh, 
Um, right, Sefi the goat for herself in her goat pen, in the kidding pen last night. She jumped in. So I've left her there. We had really bad weather all day. Because we had bad weather all day, nobody went out today. Um, this is actually a really big kitchen. Because <laughs> so I've got cupboards there, loads of cupboards there, loads of cupboards down there, loads of cupboards under here. The reason I haven't got a fully stocked functional kitchen is because the last place we lived in was only uh, a little one bedroom. Petals on the paving slabs, hello! Nice to see you. I've just finished cooking, well, making a mess, really. Hopefully I've made quiche as well, but I've definitely made a mess. And I'm just clearing it up. You're warm in the tunnel. Why are you in a tunnel? We are you on about your nice warm polytunnel? No such thing as enough storage, you're quite right. Hello, Eva. India, how lovely. You know, I would see a, uh, what's it called? Um, fortune teller, that's what we'll call her. Fort I'm still here though, Petals, don't worry. Um, I would see a fortune teller. It's, it's a Hickstead showground where it's the big, it's the um, international, it's the, the national show jumping arena, Hickstead. And I used to live one farm away from there. So we used to go there on a regular basis and loads of people, this this fortune teller, she's been going there for years. And everyone's going, go on, you should have a go. Like they're a load of rubbish, no, go on, have a go. Like, okay, then that's fine. Now, I'm 40, and this is only a few years ago. The woman said to me, I will have four children and um, move to India. I hate the heat. I don't have any children. I have no plans to have any children. Well, I did sort of foster. Foster for free, that's what you call it. I used to have a load of uh, teenagers staying over. I loved it. I love my kiddies, my teenagers. Just got to put some more stuff in the fridge. I'm talking to my cats. I might show you them in a minute. Oh dear. You know, one day I will actually get around to making several lots of pastry and um, freezing it. But given it only takes five minutes when I'm not nattering. I don't really see if there's a void yet. Here I got there, darling. Crazy cat. Crazy creature. <laughs> when the landlord came yesterday, I sent him home with a few boxes of eggs. <laughs> Keep being told by people that people who used to live here used to sell their eggs at the bottom of the drive, telling me I should do that. I don't want to do that. If I've got something extra, sure, I could sell the eggs. I can give them to people who are going through a very hard time at the moment. Thought about going to a fortune teller. Doesn't like to be told. <laughs> very good. Hey, Hugh said he might come and visit up here. He said he'd quite like to do a tour up here. Come and visit. Don't worry, Asher will be here. I found some poor Hugh. What terrifying. Anything else? I am twice his age. <laughs> Doing well for eggs. No, most of ours didn't actually stop laying over the winter. Some of them only started laying in the winter for the first time because they were young. It was really weird. You know, I was just like, I, I've got eggs in December and January and I had too many eggs in December and January, hence why I started giving them to the food bank. Um, you know, I've, I've never had to use a food bank, but I'll tell you now, I was about a day away from it. 
it does absolutely the world does need more of that and actually if you look on liz zorab by the farm if you look on her youtube channel she's started a movement um like collaboration to ask people to grow one extra plant that they weren't expecting you know planning for themselves and uh you know give it away to needy um i'm not going to do that because first of all i'm useless at gardening uh, so i would probably kill it and secondly i'll give my eggs away um if i was able if i get everything growing and i do have more food i will donate it because that's what i do yeah we're doing quite well 15 minutes it's not yet started making a racket give it 30 seconds now i've just said that don't know if you're allowed to donate fresh produce things like eggs um right i will say moray food bank where uh, where i live in moray murray as they call it but it's spelled moray um murray food bank the only reason they accept these um yeah it's just usually boxed and tinned uh do i can or like dehydrate no um i'll show you a can in, uh, in a moment show you why i don't can and i'm looking into it though um yeah 76 pounds six weeks um murray murray food bank only take fresh stuff because there's a lady there who runs um like cafe a cafe where anybody can go and it's aimed at people who are homeless um lonely elderly but anybody can go it doesn't matter who you are anyone can go and the idea is to get people together um you know and give them some interaction and then if when people are there they could they can talk to people about what help is available if they need to and they do that once a week on a wednesday um my eggs get used for that they they do like bacon bake and talk not bacon bake and talk thing they'll make um cakes and stuff like that and anyone can go along and do it hi monty um so yeah it is again it such as you're saying but what they also have in Murray is they have a home um it's uh, it's like sheltered housing it's a big house that's got um i think it's six six teenagers i think they said they're teenagers who are homeless and when they're there they basically they teach them life skills and one of the things they're teaching them is to cook and they teach them you know, how to deal with bills and money and financing and, and all of that sort of thing so it's really I really like that it's really really good but they do teach them to cook and um, my eggs go for that and one thing I found really interesting talking to that lady was she said when they get somebody in who's been living on the streets for a while and they go into this house this is the first meal most of them ask for is scrambled eggs on toast and that confused so i make the racket hold on i'm just gonna move Start sooner or later um there may not the thing is you might find that there is something like that or soup kitchens kitchens will take the food most of the time exactly monty um his mosque they started a food kitchen and i'll tell you what one thing i have found over the years because i used to live with um, a muslim guy and his mum was ill and we went over every sunday the whole family went over and we went over and she was ill she had the flu or something like that she was in bed i remember that and literally the entire muslim community knocked on the door one by one bringing us food to make sure that we all still had our big sunday roast um i mean we ended up with it was something silly like 10 chickens 
that people had roasted for us because they knew that she always cooked for her family. And it it was just, it was amazing. So, I mean, I, I wasn't, you know, I've, I've never been uh, a Muslim. I've read the Quran and it's nothing at all what most people seem to think it is. It's not at all a horrible book. It's actually, a, it's all about love and everything. It's all about um, helping your, fri your friends, your neighbours and unconditional things like that. Oh, no, no, it's a suburban hillbilly. Um, and yeah, they turned up, we had all these, these roast chickens that had been done. We had potatoes, uh, we had vegetables, there was so much food. And it was just all because they knew that she was ill, that Seema was ill. And it was just fantastic. Oh, isn't that absolutely horrible that we need four food banks in such a small area? That is awful. Yeah, it's it's horrible, absolutely horrible. Food banks of I, I hate the fact they needed and when I lived in a, a beautiful little place called Henfield in West Sussex, one of the most expensive parts of the country to live in. And they had food bank. And that shocked me. Um Yeah, so if you're if you have food left over and you don't know what to do with it. If you go to your local mosque and ask them if they have a soup kitchen or any way this food can be distributed to people that need it, they will do it. And they do it far more than Christian churches, I'm sorry to say, in this country. I don't know about it in America, I can't talk for over there, but over here, it is non-judgmental. They a mosque will feed anybody. You don't have to be a Muslim. You don't have to agree to read the Quran. Nothing. You just go in there and you say, I need help. Do you know of anybody who can help me? They will find somebody. Because it's it's part of I don't even really want to say it's a religion. I'd, I'd rather say it's it's just their way of life. And absolutely, Heather, it shouldn't, we shouldn't need them. We should not need them, and we should not need them anywhere near as bad as they are. Monty, is that the same as yours? Where you have, Is my understanding from London the same as your understanding from the Midlands? What, um... Sorry, Lynette, what are you talking about? Doesn't look like you're going to get the feedback. Have I missed something? What have I missed? Oh, buffering. Sorry. Uh, no problem, Lynette. Hopefully next time it'll be better. I, nobody else has said it's buffering. Sorry about that. I'll see you soon. Um... That's good to know about the Catholic Church program. Um, that's up in Scotland. <laughs> Hello again, Lynette. Um, yeah, it 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 does my head in um, because I've lived with a Muslim, and you know, because because I've lived within the community, within the family. Actually, at the time I was living in Finchley. Exactly, Monty just started handing out food in town oh international that's good um yeah so you know it, it absolutely does my head in when people say oh it's a horrible religion it's all this it's that and i saw a really really great video um on youtube a few months ago and it was somebody who was getting people to read the bible but they didn't know it was the bible it was all about stoning people and selling daughters and things like that. And these people say, oh, this is terrible. And uh, they're saying, what book do you think it is? They're saying, oh, we think this is the, is, you know, we think this is the Quran or I don't know. And they're saying, it's the Bible. And it is. So, you know, it's 
so much judgmental stuff but what you're supposed to do is you know in the modern day because it, it was written so long ago the modern day you have to adjust to modern life and you know mo we're not back in the day when you still stone people we're not and the people who do the whole no it is in there it is 100% you must do it and then you say well you have you stoned your neighbor you know, your other neighbour worked on a Sunday. Uh, are you going to give him the lashings or somebody else? You know, uh, do you put him to death or will the authorities do it because he worked on a Sunday? It's stupid, you know. Just uh, moderation. Be nice. Love each other. That's the message. Be kind to each other. That is the message of all of them. Every religious book in the world. I used to live in Finchley, which was... Um, being a witch, I try not to tell them either, Lynette, I just get really annoyed with it. Sometimes it just irritates me. <laughs> seafood. Yeah. How are we doing? Oh, still got five minutes to go. Ooh. How was that for everybody? Still got five minutes to go. Turn around, you annoying little thing. You feel. Um. No, my my religion is just be nice. That's it. Simple. Do what you want to do. Just be nice. As somebody said, if you're using your Bible to hit somebody over the head, you're using it wrong. Beat somebody over the head with it. Uh, I am cooking a quiche, which is really simple. Kindness is universal. Exactly. Right there, Heather. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know most churches uh, come from pagan, <laughs> pagan uh, areas. And, you know, if I, my my religion is, is Mother Nature and be good to each other. So, and it means I can eat bacon. <laughs> so, yeah. Try and find what's the difference between quiche and flan? Uh, I think a flan is bigger and is a fruity thing. Don't know. Quiche is eggs and whatever you want. So in mine, I have onion, yellow pepper, and bacon and mushrooms. I forgot about the mushrooms. See, I've been forgetting those mushrooms all evening. Um, yeah, so we'll eat half. We'll eat half of it tonight. Because that, as a single portion, well, as, as there's only two of us. And if we don't have anything else with it, like salad or anything like that, then we'll eat a quarter of it each. Flan is a dessert. I think so. I think it's sweeter, whereas I think quiche is savoury. That's what I think. I could be very wrong. Hmm. Never looked into it. Um... Anyway, how was how how was was my cooking? <laughs> Kindness to all, absolutely. That's that's it. We're not on this earth to create drama and problems. We're on this earth to create solutions. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. <laughs> I used to say that in my old office job. That was funny. You love watching me cook. Oh, thank you. I mean, I, this is taken me like an hour to, to make a quiche that normally takes five minutes maybe ten i'm pushing it with five i have to chop the vegetables um cheese flan is like quiche i don't know i'll look into it let you know um yes yeah, so that'll be ready in about 10 minutes i should imagine looking at it hey right, look at this look what look 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 what we did finally got round to hoovering <laughs> <laughs> oh dear your next video flan i don't know i'm gonna see what a flan is first i, I like the idea of, of i've always thought of flans as sweet and i've never never thought of a a cheese one monty's got me thinking now i need to go and have a look yeah yeah we finally hoovered but because it was like when did we hoover Friday. Oh, vacuum. Yeah, what's over? <laughs> exactly. Hello, freaky geek. 
Should we clean up the kitchen and make it a pot of white chilli? Oh, well, that sounds nice. Hoover is a is a vacuum. <laughs> vacuum. <laughs> That's funny, I like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lynette 13 Moons. I'm behind on her videos at the moment. It's really annoying me. I, I'll sort of lie in bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and go, oh, I haven't caught up with the videos yet. Freaky geek, I kind of like your keyboard. It's like mine, it makes the most stupid, stupidly ridiculous words. It changes them into things that don't even exist. Uh, yeah, Freaky, we've um, we've made, uh, I've made a quiche, it's in the oven. It'll be ready in about eight minutes, I reckon. And I made it from scratch, I made the pastry myself, I did the filling myself, I chopped the vegetables. I've tied it up after myself. I haven't, however, um, washed up because there's a dishwasher. Oh, I've got to turn the dishwasher on. Oh, I'll do it in a minute. So what country shape is it, <laughs> is it in? It's in a round one. Uh, Antarctica, is that round? More or less? <laughs> um, I hadn't thought of it like that. It means country as in, you know, like not perfect. The cat is eyeballing a huge fly. Okay, Heather. Earth shaped. <laughs> yeah, it's flat. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's a joke. Me and several of my friends, a couple of my friends have. <laughs> had a big argument. Some, some person decided to tell me I was wrong. That the Earth is a globe and that it's 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 flat and um, I'm from a very scientific family. Ash's family is even more scientific than mine. So, oh, thanks, Denise. Hello, you're always welcome. You shouldn't pay me compliments. I'm thinking of shaving my hair off again. Oh, I was going to show you that pot. Have to wait a minute. I'll show you that in a minute. The Earth can't be flat. Hills and mountains. Well, my point of view was the Earth it cannot be flat because if it was, cats would have thrown everything off the edge already. First spammer a few days ago. Oh, well done. You you know you're getting somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, and this person who's going, oh no, it's this this big ice wall and nobody can get over it. I was like, how do we know it's there then? How do we know it's just ice? Anyway, he sent me this photo. He said, this is a photo of this ice wall. <laughs> he sent me a photo, which is a screenshot off Game of Thrones. When there were these people riding, I think like three horses coming out of a tunnel. <laughs> is it a giant ice wall? <laughs> and I said to this person, do you actually believe this is a photo taken taken of an ice wall at the edge of the earth? And he said, yes, it is. It's none of these NASA manipulated ones. This is a real photo. <laughs> I was like, have you watched Game of Thrones? <laughs> the thing is, I hadn't even watched Game of Thrones by that point. So yeah, there we go. Scientific family. Um, I actually sent a camera up when I was 12 at school. Right, I want to show you my little, sorry, a bit close then. Um, I want to show you my little um, propagators. Is that what you call them? Look! Half the people with less than average intelligence. Sometimes I think it's more than less, uh, more than half. Game of Thrones is the intro. <laughs> right, I've got nothing growing in this one yet. This is strawberries. Oh, I only put them in four days ago. That's fine. Bell curve. Absolutely. Oh, I have something growing. Right, this is sweet peppers. I have never in my life been able to grow sweet peppers. Look at that. There's one! I know what you meant. Don't worry, freaky geek. I've got the same propagators, yay! <laughs> Chinese, mmm, yum. We're riding on the back of a turtle. I think we might be actually. Right, this is onions, spring onions. Nothing yet. Oh well. But I do have on my windowsill, so I'm putting them on my windowsill at the moment, to harden them off a bit, bringing them back. Right, this is tomatoes. Look at them! 
these are um, little diddy when these spring onions sprout <laughs> they call them like springs no spring onions you Americans call them salad onions they're just thin onions you just don't let onions go to bulb <laughs> anyway these are uh, sort of cherry tomatoes a tiny bit bigger than cherry tomatoes and they're orange and I was getting really worried about them because they were doing absolutely nothing and then all of this growth I'm not joking is 48 hours good never let the child in you die I understand what you mean about Terry Pratchett this lot is little gem lettuce they've just gone nuts see they're going forward I have to turn them around every day Scallions, green onions, spring onions. Ah, thank you. Now this next one is lavender. And we had a bit of accident. <laughs> I, I, I dropped it on the floor. And we just picked it all up, put it in there. And I was going to repot it today, but I didn't get around to it. So, uh, yeah, never mind. But these are lavender. And somebody said on a YouTube video, I can't remember who, said... You can't grow lavender from seeds. I'm doing it. Doing quite well, really. So they're now living on the windowsill. And at night, sorry, the wrong thing. At night, they have the little thingies on. They've only just started living in here uh, on the windowsill at night because they were on the radiator. No, anyway, I don't know where my mint has gone. Oh yeah, all those for seeds, they just dry out really too quickly. Right, I think the dish is ready. What do you think, little guinea pigs? Here. Yeah. What do you think, little boys? Tea time. Let's grab a look. No, it doesn't taste like peppers. You're right there. <laughs> Freaky Geek, if you've ever heard of a comedian called Dara O'Brien... Irish, he's really funny. Well, I like him. Um, he, on one of his, his DVDs, CDs, whatever you want to call them. Hold on. Woo! Right, I just need to tap it. No, nope, a little bit squishy. Only just. That about five more minutes, but my oven, what I can actually do now is just turn it off so it doesn't make that racket. Uh, in five minutes, and that'll be fine. Okay, what I was going to say about canning, somebody asked, I think it was Heather, I can't remember. Sorry, um, you see, this this is a kilner jar. And these I can get really, really easily. Now, the mason jars that you guys in America seem to use for canning that have um, a flat lid, all right, that have a flat lid and then a spin thing that goes over the top of it. And then once you've canned it, you can take the spin thing off. I can't find them over here, mason jars. And several places, I'm sure I could if I look harder and if I, you know, go on Amazon and get some shipped over. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it seems really, really difficult to actually get a hold of them. Um, and I don't know, I would like to do some canning. Those are my eggs for the, what's it? Oh, canning isn't popular over here. To be honest, I hadn't heard about it until I started on YouTube following homesteaders. Um, canning's just, it's, it's rarely done. It's so rare. Um, but I want to start doing it. And I've got loads of um, glass jars. I'm saving any glass jars that I have. You know, all of these down here. But they've all got, sorry, back now. Uh, yeah, come up on a spot. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just can't, I can't find them. And 
canning's just not done. We do we do save something. What a uh, corner shop that sells what the mason jars that have got the uh, for pressure canning that have got the flat top and then the spinny bit just is just around the edge that goes on top and you take the spinny bit off. Have you got those in the corner shop? Because if you have, you need to come up here and bring me some. <laughs> I need a drink. Uh, yeah, I probably could order from America, but then I haven't got a pressure canner. So I think I've got to pay out for a pressure canner. I'm looking, I saw a video last year, year before. Just doing myself a little drink, sorry. You squishums. You little squishums. Um, I saw a video last year of somebody doing it but with it who didn't have a pressure canner um money i haven't got money <laughs> trade a quiche yeah i will you're right i will i make excellent brownies i haven't made any brownies in, in about a year though i used to make them down at my friend's house <laughs> you went over to freaky geek's place Where'd you live, Freaky Geek? You know, I'm, I feel really, really bad about putting things on a wish list. But I suppose my way of thinking about it. <laughs> um, I guess my way of thinking about it is if it's on my wish list, I know I can buy it uh, at future date. And I know how much I need to save up. And I know my family can go on there and buy them presents. So, yeah. I don't know. Just never, never, never been one for asking. Um, yeah, people keep going on about fermenting. To me, it sounds icky. I don't know, I've never tried it. Let's see my, my little patient cake for my chickens. There you go. That's what my chickies will get. Yeah, Denise, exactly. Hey, look, that's kind of sort of Australia, if you're looking a bit weirdly at it. Yeah, so that's my chicken's treat for tomorrow. It's quite thick. I shall crunch it up tomorrow. I shall break it up and feed it to the chickens. They love it. Big fans of pastry. My, my family would ignore it as well. Seriously, they would. <sighs> hmm. I don't know. I know somebody was hanging in an oven. Um, tomato sauce. Uh, tomato, uh, like a uh, bolognese type sauce. I refer to vegetables like pickle. Yeah, I like pickles. Um, Ash is diabetic though, so we have to be really careful. Um, in the sugars involved and fermenting it's working with the sugars uh things like uh, jams um preserves things like that i can't make those well i can but Asha can't eat them and there's, there's only two of us there's no point in me oh fermenting is now i can't have salt um i have a really really rare, rare allergy um normally three people in the country at any one time have this allergy to salt and I'm one of them so hence earlier when I say my allergies are paying up playing up my nose was itching my eyes are red it's um it was because of that salt in some food that I had earlier hello heaven gate cherry cherry farm yeah it is really really bad for food <laughs> yeah no fermenting then I knew there was a reason why I didn't look into it I just couldn't remember um See that? Peanut butter. I'm terrible. <laughs> mm. I love peanut butter. Let's see if this is ready. I'm actually going to turn the oven back on five minutes.
Use a little bit more cooking, sorry. Gluten free, dairy free. <laughs> oh, I love pickles and sugary stuff. Ash, I can't have them. He loves salty stuff. I can't have that. But this quiche works really well because the proteins in the eggs, you know, the crust, that's another reason I don't fold the crust back under because I don't need a lot of crust. And, you know, crust is carbs. So if you're diabetic, you should really stay down on the carbs if you're type 2. I don't know about type 1. So that's why the pastry is quite thin. Um, I don't make it thick. Uh, but yeah, I can't have salt. I never add salt to anything. Um, I have I have antihistamine tablets every night. And the reason I do that is because I do eat food that's processed, you know, that you buy from the shops. Everything has salt in it. Um, I can have a certain amount and then after that, it starts causing me problems. So, yeah, it sucks. I love sweet potatoes, or yams as they're also called. Even paleo <laughs> cheese. You don't want a quiche. Lots of cheese in quiche. <laughs> cheese makes it so tasty. I didn't put enough cheese in the last one as well as messing up with the milk, but so tasty. Socks, what are you doing? This is the wildcat that came to the farm. I'll try and pick her up. Come in, buddy. She knows she's not allowed on the side in the kitchen. You right, girl? Her eyes are wide like that because she's slightly stoned. Aren't you? Could have hit me. <laughs> she's got a catnip toy in her bed. Not currently behaving. No. The, the trouble is using sweet potatoes as crushed for quiche. I saw something about that yesterday, making it as a pastry. And I thought that was really weird. Okay, so it's possible. Well, that's good. Every diet costs a lot. It's really annoying. Um, you know, a lot of people, when, we, as, when I said we were like a day away from using a food bank, I'm not exaggerating. Um, we went through a really, really bad time. Um, and I was putting weight on. Now, I've got quite a few different health problems which will affect the weight and affect my ability to lose weight um big dollars exactly exactly um you know my my doctor said oh you go to weight watchers no i can't afford to go to weight watchers okay well we'll pay for three months and the nhs is a fabulous a fabulous thing it does it does everything oh it does a lot of stuff it has its problems but it has its great things uh, and one of the things they did was um, they paid for me to go to Weight Watchers for six months. And the doctor said, you didn't lose any weight. I said, well, how could I? I couldn't afford to buy the food. So I was having to um, substitute everything I could, what we could afford to buy. Um, and over here, I'm, it's probably the same in America. Over here, bad food is cheap. Good food is expensive. And part of the reason I want to um, cook my own, uh, grow my own vegetables is because with Brexit going on, it, the prices of, of fresh vegetables have it skyrocketed. Slice thin rounds, little olive oil, layer them in a pan, bake for about 20 minutes till tender. You can use, oh, that sounds lovely, Heather. That sounds really nice, Heather. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people don't think about this. Um, I thought a lot about it. Um, I mean, I, I studied European business law. I know how it's going to affect us, and I know how it already has affected us. Um, and growing my own vegetables where possible, growing my own food where possible, is the only way to ensure we can afford it. Because, you know, we're not... We're not super rich people. Ow! Oh. A few more minutes. Um, you know, we're not super rich people. We don't do this as, as a hobby for the hell of it. We're doing this for our life. For our lifestyle. So we can actually afford to have a little bit more money to be able to buy the things you want to. 
Exactly. I mean, to be honest, Heather, mine probably won't be classed as organic because I don't go and buy organic um, everything because it's more expensive. But, I mean, such as the chicken muck, the horse muck, the horses will get chemical wormers because I'm not messing around with the horse's gut because it is so... Colic surgery is expensive. Losing a horse is heartbreaking. I can't afford colic surgery anymore these days because I don't work anymore. When you could, it wasn't a problem. Seven had a horse called, a pony called Seven that we've had. She had about £15,000 spent on medical bills in the first year of her life. She wasn't insured. I can't do that anymore. I'm not eating them either. No, I'm not eating the horses. Um, you know, they're, they're our pets, they're our family. None of our animals from here get eaten. So, um, I mean, one thing I have done with the local goat farm down the road is I will help them out and they will pay me in food. Simple. Um, I actually have some really, really nice bit of meat. It's only about that big, but there's only two of us. <coughs> And that is amazing, really nice joint. Um, and I've got that in the freezer. I was looking at it the other day thinking I must eat that soon. Because <laughs> of course she's been spring, she's got all the babies being born now. Um, but yeah, it works, works for us. Yeah, bartering, it works. A um, farmer who's got his sheep in with us, he doesn't pay, he doesn't pay me any rent because I don't want any. Um, because what he does do, if I need help, like when Sefi was ill, he got in his car, he came over. He brought me the drug I needed, he did the injection for me, because if I hold her head, she's a lot better than if anyone else tries to hold her head. So he did the injections instead of me doing them and Asha struggling to hold her. Um, I couldn't find my syringes, didn't matter, he had one, use his. Um, it's fantastic, it's a brilliant way, if there's something wrong, it's like the other day, one of his, uh, one of the little lambs I'm him, one of the black ones, um, he had a problem with his foot, well, he came up, dealt with it, um, I went up there, I was going to help him, but he didn't need help, <laughs> he did it all himself, because he's a cheap farmer, um, you know, and it, and it works, I like to raise meat, the rest of the family not really participating in this homestead adventure. They won't until they, until they start getting things from you. Until they start getting your pro, your produce free, then they'll be into it. I'll tell you that now. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's the agreement what, that I had with Asher, which is I can have the animals, but he doesn't want to be on first name terms with his, with his food, which I, I understand, to be honest. I'm not sure I could send one away now for slaughtering I don't think I could do it if I could have somebody come here and shoot them I would be happy to then eat them because they don't know where they are uh, you know they, they they don't know what's happening they're at home they're chilled they're relaxed as far as they're concerned oh it's got a bucket of really nice tasty food thanks mum last thing they know about I have no problem with doing that but Asha does and so that's it <laughs> she does live on the earth trust me very nice place as well I sometimes wonder if I live on the earth Ow. nearly done you take the seat um, everyone's leaving me. Right, guys, I am going to go give you one last look at this because it's taking forever and it's being annoying. So I'll give you one last look at this. Oh, I disappeared. Sorry, I didn't know I disappeared. I thought you guys disappeared. <laughs> Must be socks, I was showing some socks to the cat. Oh dear, it's me buffering then, it must be. What do you think? What do you think of that, people? 
Asha, tea time. That's just fantastic. And the best thing about doing it in a cake tin is I can get it out easily. She says. Wow. See, normally I'll have all the vegetables underneath and then put spring form pan. Uh, no, it's a loose bottom pan. <laughs> it's a loose bottom. <laughs> I'll try and open this without breaking it and show you. Oops, get out of it. There we go. Right. <laughs> a few loose bottoms. Oh, right. I'm trying to get something still live, by the way. Oh, See okay. these? You Americans, you don't have them, do you? <laughs> or a lot of you don't seem to have them. Raise animals. Um, Ash is going to show you how to do this. No, I'm not. I'm going to... Right, you need to wash my hands. But you peel off those bits around the edge, then it will be loose. Just use your fingers. It's hot! Still the fingers. Peel off the edges. Because the pastry's gone everywhere. It is hot, look. Pastry's gone everywhere. <laughs> Asha normally dishes up the food here. Oh, there we go. A bit more pastry for the chickens. That's what we've done. That should be okay. Ow! Oh, that's hot. He's very hot. I don't handle hot things very well. Then put that on top of some linkers. Cooler than it. It is not working, Asha. Mm. Asha's gonna have to do it. I can't. Oh well. This looks easy. Oh, this looks yummy. This looks yummy. Oh, I may have taken it out of the oven about a minute too fast. It's starting to sort of um, sink a little bit. Oops. Here's Asha. He'll do it. Get it out. I can't get it to work. You always do it easily. It's a bit hot. Oh, is it hot? Slightly. Oh, is it? What did you do to me? She's slightly firmer. Coming out. You've got to move the dog from below your Dog, get out. You see, it's not me, it's not working. Um, hold on. You're hungry. <laughs> me too, Monty. Look at these. I've got a little Highland Coos. With a paintbrush, paint, with tartan paint. Yes, the, it's... The Highland cow is painting its room tartan. I think that should just sit on a plate and cool down for a bit. <laughs> but then we're not going to be able to eat it now. Yes, we are. Uh, no. What have I done to it? I managed to jam its bottom. It has a wedge bottom. It's a common problem we all face. Do you now? Yeah. <laughs> I have to live with this. No, you've definitely wedged the bottom in. And it's, I've never had this problem before. It's the one time I'm doing the thing on video. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll cut out a bit and lift it out and then... Uh, I'm going to cry! It'll come out when it's warmer. Knife around the edge? Yeah, probably. With, no, it'll scratch the thing. Uh, there's a blunt knife in here. Yeah, I know. I was using it earlier. There are many blunt knives. Oh. Use that backwards. Not coming out. Mm. Wow. Can I make a bit of the chickens? No, it's a chicken. Oh. Oh. Cut it in the pan. Okay. Yeah. Mm. 
They all want to see how well it's worked out. Mm. It it's just not coming out. Yeah, it's a bit um, stuck. It's never done this! <laughs> what did I do wrong? Yeah, exactly, live TV. Just yeah. cut a bit out of that bit that you've already loosened off. You know what, any time I cook anything on YouTube, it goes wrong, but... Yeah, this is, this is not going to come out in a night, looking nice. Grease the pan. I don't normally grease the pan. I've never had to before, and it's never been a problem. Now, every time I cook anything on YouTube, it goes wrong, but... Yeah, this is, this is not going to come out in a night, looking nice. Grease the pan. I don't normally grease the pan. I've never had to before, and it's never been a problem. There we go. You filmed it. <laughs> Murphy's Law, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is going to come out in pieces. Well... Okay, it's going to be in pieces. I will cook another one next week. Your bottom is stuck, that's the problem. <laughs> I will cook another one next Whoever said about the bottom getting stuck? Yes. It's lovely. Look. It is nice. It's really nice. Does it actually have a bottom? Yes it, does. yes, it has a bottom. It may be because I was too busy nattering. Somebody said about the, the pastry going soggy. Yeah. Yeah, I think the answer is yes, it does. If you leave it as long as I did. Yes. Don't be nattering, just get it done quickly. I've put onions and peppers and mushrooms in this time, so it may well be that that was a bit too soggy. Possibly. Whoever said that, you're right. Or slightly on the thin yes. I think it's slightly on the thin side. It's, it's pastry too thin. Yeah, stru oh, that's structurally and sound. Structural integrity field Yeah. has failed. I, I don't that. have one I prepared earlier. That is the problem. You are right. And they say that as someone with a doctorate in civil engineering. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Doctor of engineering tells me that I, I've, it's structurally unsound. Yes. Or not cool enough. Whatever. Okay, everybody. It is tasty. It smells lovely. It smells fabulous. Its structural integrity field has collapsed. But look at that. It will still taste nice. Okay, everybody, I am going. Thank you so much for joining me. I've had a lot of fun. It's quarter to ten at night. A bit late to be eating, but that's my life. So it never caved in. No, it hasn't caved in. Here we go. That's the point. I'll show you this this way. Look at that. Oh, that's yummy. Yeah, definitely make one for dinner. Take a photo and show me how well it worked out. <laughs> okay, guys, I am going. I will see you soon. Thank you so much for joining me. I've had a good laugh. See you soon, everybody.